As I'm sure most of you can probably tell, this is a go-kart. For the people who know stuff about go-karts, this is a CRG KT5 with a Rotax Max engine. But for the people who don't know that much about go-karting, this is simply a go-kart with a two-stroke motor that puts out about 30 horsepower. As a comparison, if you've done rental carts before, those are usually four-stroke motors with anywhere between 8 and 13 horsepower. And those ones are usually a lot heavier than this one because people like to play bumper carts and those ones are built a lot heavier and tougher so people don't destroy them after a week. Now I can't claim to be the world's fastest driver, nor can I claim to be a huge expert in this area, mostly because I haven't owned it for that long, but in the short time that I've had it, I've had a lot of fun with it. And that brings us on to, well, why do I have it on the channel? This is a machining channel, not a racing channel, and the answer is, I need to make a few parts for the cart. Unsurprisingly, anything to do with motorsport is generally really expensive, and karting falls into that. So given that I have the small lathe and mill, I thought I'd try to make a few of the parts myself, save a bit of money, and hopefully learn a few things along the way. The first thing I'd like to tackle is the front torsion bar, which having it should help the steering, or at least give it a bit of extra grip. The thing about go-karts is they don't have any suspension, or at least not in the same way that a car does. Obviously a car has coil springs or leaf springs, the go-kart doesn't. The spindle and kingpin assembly that holds the front wheel on is pretty much welded directly to the frame. There's a whole lot of adjustments to play around with to help change the tyre setup, that being the camber and caster angles, but that isn't suspension. At the back is a very similar story. There's no suspension, and the axle bearings are bolted directly to the chassis. Furthermore, it's a solid rear axle, i.e. no differential, so no matter what happens, both of the wheels are going to spin at the same speed. If you're travelling in a straight line, having no rear differential probably doesn't matter, but once you get to a corner, that's where you start having problems. As you probably know, when you go around a corner, the outside wheels will trace a larger radius or arc than the inside wheels, and naturally, they will want to travel at different speeds, but obviously they can't because there is a solid rear axle. So naturally, you'd expect some slip in the tyres effectively, and that's not great for grip. Go-karts, however, do get around this because there actually is some flex in the chassis, which acts as a crude suspension. You can probably see here how the cart out at the very front flexes to the point where the back left wheel is actually off the ground as it goes around the corner. And this action effectively makes up for the lack of a rear differential on the axle. Obviously this is a huge oversimplification, but it should help make my point that changing how the frame twists and bend will change how the cart itself handles. And that brings us back to the front. As you can see, there are two pieces of tube sticking out at the front, one on each side, and the reason why it's there is it allows you to attach a torsion bar at the front, and doing so will stiffen up the front end of the cart. There's also a torsion bar at the rear, but I'm not going to focus on that today. Now CRG do sell their own torsion bar, but if I was to get it, along with the clamps, it would have been well over 200 bucks. Instead, I decided to make it myself. I started off with a piece of 25mm tube. I could have gone with 30mm, but it would have been a bit too big for the clamps that I was going to make. And for the clamps, I'm just going to recycle one of my many gear rubbers. I would like to stress though, for anyone who is actually into carding and watching this video, this obviously isn't the best setup, but it should give me a feel for how the torsion bar affects the cart, and if it makes the cart better, I can always go ahead and buy a proper one at a later date. I had a friend of mine tell me that karting is really a 3 or 4 year learning exercise, and you are really thrown in at the deep end without knowing exactly what you're doing. 
So without doing this myself and really seeing how a torsion bar affects the cart, I really wouldn't know if it affects the cart in a positive way or a negative way or when I should or should not have it. The torsion bar will be held in place by two split clamps which I'll need to make on the lathe and the mill. Doing it this way means I can easily get rid of it if I don't like it. To drill the holes I'm going to use a stub drill which is a lot more rigid than a regular jobber drill and if I take it easy it will drill into the side of the aluminium without any issue. And to hold it in place, the clamps will simply slide out and lock onto the pieces of tube. Overall, it's not the best looking thing that I've ever made, but it really doesn't need to look good, it just needs to work. I'll probably get a few raised eyebrows at the track, but really, I'm here to see if it works or not, and if it looks good or not, well, is what it is. We'll see later on in the video if it works or not, but there are a few other things that we need to do. Like pretty much anything that has a chain drive, getting the chain tension correct is pretty important. I don't want it to be so little that the chain pops off mid-race, or too much that the chain chews through the new sprocket. Now the way to adjust the tension on a go-kart is to move the engine forwards and backwards, which will move the front sprocket forwards and backwards. The engine itself is on rails, so when it's not clamped down, you can easily move it forwards and backwards. Now to help with this, there is an engine mount stop, which will push the engine forward and it will help you fine tune it. Now the way that it comes from the factory really isn't the greatest design. Trying to get in there with a spanner to adjust it is really difficult and it's even harder when you have a wheel and a chain installed. Now to remove this one part, it actually turns out that you have to remove the bearing to get in there with a spanner and doing that meant I had to remove the axle, the exhaust and the disc brake. So this 10 minute job quickly turned into a several hour job, which is pretty much par the course for any automotive job that I've ever done. Now this is going to be one of those rare occasions where the part is actually too big to fit in the red lathe. The ball is too big to fit in the spindle taper and it's been over molded onto the bolt so I don't really want to take it off. You can also see if you look up close how these sides, the flats, are starting to round over when I use a spanner on it. Why they decided to make it out of plastic I really don't know. I eventually decided to set it up in the milling machine and it took a few attempts to find a setup that would actually work.
A big dab of Loctite on the cap head screw should be enough to keep it in place. And with it fitted back on the go-kart, we can see just how much easier it is for me to tension the chain. I don't know why it doesn't come this way from the factory, but this is going to save me a lot of time at the track. That chain is probably a bit tight for a go-kart, but at least it's a lot easier to adjust now. The final thing that I want to do is make a replacement brake protector block. As you can imagine, the brake disc is quite large and it sits really close to the ground. And if you go off on a corner, which I do quite often, and you scrape on a raised curb, you could potentially do a lot of damage to the disc brake. It's for this reason that there are usually nylon blocks placed under the car to protect it. The thing is though, where my nylon block should be, well, there's pretty much nothing. There's the bracket and not much else. I must have driven over a curb at some point and it must have broken off. Well, there's the bracket and the small amount that is still left. Looking closely at it, there is a bit of porosity in the injection mold. I don't know if it would have been enough for it to completely fail, but I haven't had this cart for that long, and it shouldn't have failed that quickly. Now, unfortunately for me, I only noticed this the night before I was supposed to race, and that meant I didn't have enough time to order a replacement one, or buy a piece of nylon. I don't really work with nylon in the workshop, so I don't have any big pieces on hand. Instead, I decided to make a replacement using a piece of aluminium. Doing this is a real stab in the dark. I don't know if aluminium is the right material. I know they do have stainless steel skid plates, but I haven't seen one of these skid blocks made of steel before. Aluminium should hopefully protect the cart from any damage if I scrape the curb, but hopefully aluminium is soft enough that in the event that I clip a curb by accident, the aluminium should break or wear away, Whereas I was a little bit afraid that if I'd used steel and I clipped a curb, I might end up doing damage to the bracket or the frame. And doing damage to a go-kart frame can easily be the end of that go-kart, at least the end of its life in a competitive sense. I've just rounded off the end to help prevent it from catching on anything. And that should be okay. Obviously only time will tell as to whether this was a good idea or not, but this should hold up at least for one race meeting. So the question is, well how well did it work? Well let's look at the onboard footage. The torsion bar definitely worked in the sense that I could feel how it affected the handling of the cart. The front of the cart, at least steering wise, was a lot snappier and I had a lot more grip, but this was to the detriment of the rear. As you can probably see in the footage, as I go into the corner, the front is holding on, but the rear is letting go. Now this might work for some people, but I just couldn't get it to work. I did run it in the previous afternoon, and it did feel a lot better, but that was on a colder day, and when I was running it here in the footage, it was a lot hotter, a lot stickier, and it just wasn't working. So after this first heat, I ended up removing it, and it felt a lot better. Overall, it was a really good learning exercise, and one that I could really only learn by shoving on a torsion bar and seeing for myself how it affected the cart. At least it only cost me about 10 bucks of materials, and only about 5 place in the race grid. As for the skid block, well, it held up well. It did its job in protecting the disc brake, though I'm not sure how well it worked compared to a nylon one. 
I'm still really happy with it, and it hasn't worn all that much. There is a fair amount of adjustment, so I can drop it a little bit more as it wears, but I'm really happy with it. Overall, a really good learning experience and a really fun day. And that about wraps it up for this video. It's a little bit different to what I normally do on the channel, but I thought you'd enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.